today on Sally. My husband is 800 pounds. I watch him struggle every day and it's tearing me apart. Extreme obesity. I am 500 pounds. Leads to a fight for life. I don't want to die right now. I take over 22 different medications. Can they save themselves? I need to do something. She's afraid for her life. Today on Sally. like a prisoner in your own home because of your weight or the way you feel about your body. Just trying to make it from the living room to the kitchen might be a struggle. Imagine not being able to bathe yourself. Think of what it would be like if you couldn't dress yourself or even use the restroom on your own. Now that's how our guests today are living their lives. Take a look. My husband is 800 pounds and I have to do everything for him. I watch him struggle every day and it's tearing me apart. I'm currently 420 pounds and I've struggled with my weight all my life. I get very frustrated and depressed about not being skinny. My big thing is that I don't want to embarrass my children. I get so mad sometimes when I see people staring and snickering at me. I don't want to die. I mean, I'm not scared of dying, but I don't want to die right now. Later, you're going to meet the man who wanted to be on the show but couldn't make it on the plane to be here in person because of his weight, 800 pounds. So he is going to join us via satellite. First, let's talk to Shannon. Shannon gave birth to her first child and gained 40 pounds. Okay, I gain more than that, as a matter of fact. <laughs> but she's got four kids, two relationships, and 20 years later, and she weighs 466 pounds. And not happy with your weight. No. She hates being a burden to her daughter, who has to brush uh, Shannon's hair and put on her pants and her shoes. The daughter does, and Shannon prays to lose weight and be healthy. Now, you've gained 20 pounds a year since 1990. Just about that. Just yeah. every year, 20 pounds, 20 pounds. I take like 10 off and then I... Put 20 on. Put 20 back on. Just yo-yo. When did you realize that the weight was really a problem? I mean, we're a weight-obsessed society, so when did it hit you? Oh, well, that, I know. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Um, it was in the early 90s that it really, really hit home because our family does a um, canoe trip. We go down the river, and it's just a really great weekend. And my husband and I, we were able to get a babysitter, and we went, and we're canoeing. And we stop, and we play in the water a little bit, and then canoe some more. And I was in the canoe. We got to the landing, and I had to have three people, my husband and two other family members, helped me out of the canoe because I, from sitting, the circulation gets cut off. When you're as big, when your legs are big, right. your circulation gets cut off. See, that's the and, thing people don't think of. And you and couldn't get out of the canoe. I couldn't get out of the canoe. Thank God we didn't tip over because I'd have been in real trouble. We have some home video of you showing some daily activities that are also a struggle. Let's take a look. Okay. I've always been a big girl and I'm currently 466 pounds. There are days that I cry because I get just so depressed and frustrated I want to be healthier. I want to be around for my kids. I want to be better for my husband, for our relationship. I'm at the end of my rope. I've tied a knot and I'm just hanging on right now. Well, Shannon's sister, Sharon, says weight has been an issue in the family, no matter yes. whether they're canoeing or not. And your sister has gone from size 24 to size 16. Yes. She is also worried that you might be killing yourself. 
because you're not going down like she is. Would you have her come on out, please? Oh, yeah. 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 You know, from what we can tell, this is a wonderful family. Very close. It really is. Very close, and everyone gets along, and they love each other. Now, you took control of your weight, even though this is a family of people who have been overweight. Right. What did you do? Um, in April of this year, I had a surgery, which I realized is a very desperate... Um, Attempt, yeah. Right. A stomach right. stapling. A, um, a ruin why, um, similar to the stomach stapling, but this has proven to be a more permanent solution. Now, how much have you lost? Um, today is five months since my surgery, and I've lost 65 pounds. 65 in five months. What does Shannon need to do to help herself? I would love for her to have this surgery. Um, I, like I said, it's a, a drastic measure to take, but I know that she has um, had several attempts at weight loss, prescription, uh, doctor, physician assisted, um, every over-the-counter attempt. Um, Weight Watchers, she's in tops, and I, I just want you she's to She's done all of those things. She has. And all I'm afraid if she doesn't do something, though, she's going to die. I want her around, and I want you to be here for your family, for your husband, your kids, and I, I want you to take of her it seriously. Kids, this is a family problem. When somebody is overweight, uh, Samantha is Shannon's daughter. She is 16. And she feels the same as your sister. She's really afraid you're going to die from being overweight. Not easy for a teenager to face. Let's hear what she has to say. Samantha, come on out. <laughs> Samantha, how does mother's weight affect your life? I don't think that I can. <laughs> I can't be a normal teenager because my mom is overweight. I have to help her get dressed. I have to help her put her shoes on. Right. And I don't bring friends over the house very often because I'm afraid of what they'll say. How do you feel about that? It makes me feel like I'm a failure as a mom because my kids don't they're being cheated out of the chance of, of that part of childhood, of sharing their home with other kids, that they're not, they're not able to just be normal. What happens when she grows up and leaves the house? She's 16. It's not long before no, you... No, that's one of the reasons I have to do something. I realize that I'm overweight, and I don't want to be a burden to my family to my children. I want to be around to have grandchildren sit on my lap. I want to have a lap for them to sit on. <laughs> right. uh, you know, I mean. Are, are you embarrassed by mom? Are you angry at her? I'm not angry at her, but I'm very embarrassed. Like, when she takes me to the doctor's office, the, the waiting room chairs, they have arms on them. And like, people in there, they look at her like, is the chair going to stick to her when she stands up? Mm -hmm. And that, that embarrasses me. What would you like to do? Why, how many years has this been when all else has failed? It's been a good 25, e easily. 25, 25 years of fighting this battle. Easily. You have to get tired of fighting that kind of an addiction yes. for 25 years, because that's really what it is. I'm coming to grips with that term, addiction. It is. I'm afraid, though, if she doesn't do something, how many more years she'll be able to She's going to be 40. That's, right. that's absolutely right. I'm really right. afraid for her life. Everybody is. So I think if, if you got here, the time is now, right? Yes, I am serious. I, I, this spring, I really, I know most people turn over a new leaf at New Year's. You're going to turn for it over? For me, it was this spring. And... I have been really trying hard to stick to day by day watching what I eat and disciplining myself. Has it worked at all? 
to some extent it has. I, I've seen some some behavioral changes. Good. Um, I was starting to feel like oh, it's just not going to happen. And you know, you can't give up. I got another burst of energy when the show called. My sister had told me about writing the letter, Good. and because that's just, what we're going to try to it do. Was, I'm out of going the blue, to try to watch you and see if we can't give you some help, okay? Yes. Next, we're going to meet a man who can't breathe if he lies down. Why? His body is 800 pounds. He's going to tell us what his life is like and why he wants to change it. And is he ready when we return? I think it's very important. And now, from our reaction room. I think you need help. And I want you to get the help that you need. And I really don't want to lose you. I love you very much. I promise you, Samantha, and <laughs> that I will do with God's strength and help everything possible to lose weight. Next. What are the doctors most concerned about? What well, he most concerned about my life. I feel like a prisoner in my own body. I was 210 pounds when I met my wife. So you married a 210 pound man and you no got man. an 800 pound yes. man. That's still my husband. I love him to death. talking with people who say their weight is killing them and this is a family matter their loved ones agree now Dennis is joining us via satellite from his home in Georgia because he can't make the journey to New York uh, we are joined however in the studio by his wife Eileen and his childhood friend how long have you known t this is Tony how long have you known him about 15 years 15 years that's a long time let's take a look at their story because my husband is the size that he is, I have to bathe him, um, I have to help him dress, I have to do everything like that for him. He has real bad asthma. He, he coughs when he stands up, I mean, he coughs sitting down. So he, he's really bad off. It really hurts me when he can't play with his boys it, and can't do things with the family, he can't do family activities. It really hurts, and I'm really scared that one morning I'm going to wake up and he's going to be gone. Now, you have six children? Yes, ma'am. And you take care of six children and your husband and do everything for him, like help him in the bathroom? Yes, ma'am. You must be a saint. <laughs> you really must be a saint. I think, uh... Dennis... I guess the question we all want to know is, how did this happen? Well, Sally, um, it started six years ago. When I got married in 1995, uh, I just started increasing the weight. Now, how, how, uh, what size were you when you got married? What did you weigh when you I got was, married? I was 210 pounds. When I, met, when I met my wife. So you married a 210 pound man and you no, got an 800 no. pound yes. man, yes, right? How do you feel about this? Sally, it's very, very emotional. It's, it's, it's so emotional. It's, it's too hard to describe, but I can give you an example. I feel like a prisoner in my own body, yelling for help and can't get out and no one hear me and um i go to the doctor they tell me crazy things like put put the locks on the refrigerator and on the cabinet and um give me all try to give me all kind of medicine and it's not doing me any good how how does he get to the doctor at 800 pounds well they transport me uh, in a wheelchair, in a handicap, in a handicap van. van. Right. And uh, and my poor wife, thank God for her and my six children. 
But is this Ma fair to the children? Ma'am? Is it fair to the children? Oh, yes, ma'am. It's so pitiful. It is pitiful, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Tony, uh, what was he like? You've known him 15 years. What yes. was he like? What do you think is happening? Sometimes somebody outside the family can see this. What's happening, Tony? Well, when we were, when we were younger, I, we played a lot, you know, and, and he was always a little larger than we were. But he was the first one. I mean, I was basically the first one to get tired. And our favorite line was to him was, stop playing, Lamont. You know, he, would, he was full of energy. As you've seen him get this big, what have you both done? What have you tried to do? We've tried getting him to walk more. Um, we have tried lots of diets and Every plans. kind of diet? Yes, ma'am, we really have. How does he sneak food then? You don't get this big unless you're eating. Sadly, really, he doesn't eat that much. Um, he eats like one time a day. So I really don't think it's like his. his he eats one, one time, time a day. That's impossible, though. One time a day. That's he don't eat. He it, his eating is not is not the cause of the way he is like this. That's why he's saying you know the doctor's saying put the locks on the refrigerators and all this kind he of stuff. He eats once I, a day. What does he time, eat? Um, he eats a large amount because his weight capacity, you know. So he has he has to eat enough to you know carry him himself around you know to give him the energy that he needs so you know he, he but he eats only one time a day well but you can eat a lot one time a day what about bathing how how I, I saw you scrubbing him yes ma'am um, he and has going to, sit, to the bathroom he has, has to, to sit, keep a bucket yes ma'am and he has to sit like on the side of the um, tub for me to give him a bath and everything and I have to and I have to do everything She for basically him. does everything for him. You're going to have an operation soon, is that right? Yes, ma'am. They're going to do a, um, a stapling, a chest, a chest, um, chest bypass, um, the, um, and, a, and a section while they added it. And um, that's going to be in October 31st at 6 a.m. And I'll be sh it should be on the internet live. What they're going to do, Sally, is they're going to go in and make his stomach the size of an egg. And so that way he won't take in as much. And the operation is going to be on the internet? It's supposed to be. I, I, yeah. I requested it. You want people to see? I, I, yes, ma'am, I requested it. Uh, what are the doctors most concerned about? What he most concerned about my life. And um, he told me I am very, very blessed. He, he, he stood up and asked me a question, what kind of man am I? I told him I was a man of God, and I'm a praying man. Eileen, this is not the man you married, and yet you love him enough to do all these real personal things for him. Yes, ma'am. Do you yes. sometimes feel it's unfair? Well, no, sadly, because I love him, sadly, and he was 210 pounds I'm then, and to me, in my mind, he's still 210 pounds. He's the man that I know. <laughs> That's still my husband. I love him to death. Aren't you worried that one night... I'm worried that What's one your night, greatest fear? Um, that he's go I'm going to wake up and he's not going to be with me. So that's why I just need him to understand that, you know, just need to try to get some help or he need to do something, you know, because we love him. He has six wonderful kids, sadly. They love him to death. Well, we will follow the operation to see what's going to happen. Coming up, we're going to meet a 500-pound woman who fears she won't live to be 40. Remember, we talked about that. We'll be right back. And now, from our reaction room. He is me, a father, very, very much. And I hope, you know, I'm praying that there's something someone can do. Sometimes I feel so alone. Next. She's afraid for her life. I need to be motivated more. I need more help. Marion, do you think she really tries to lose weight? In the beginning, no. 
You've got to be really strong-willed, and sometimes I just don't have that willpower. I'm just tired of being sick and tired. Imagine your best friend never seeing the upstairs of your house or never joining you for a movie or shopping or never going out and doing anything that friends are supposed to do and it's because of the weight question. Well, that's what Marianne goes through with her best friend Diane. Diane weighs about 500 pounds and she so wants to see Diane get on a program to lose weight that she brought her here today, right? She's afraid yes. for her life. Yes. Let's take a look at Diane on videotape. I am 500 pounds, and it is so impossible to find a scale that will go over 400. I take over 22 different medications every day. I have been on oxygen since August of 2000. Now I have to sleep with it on. What I want to do is I want to lose the weight because I, I have a lot to live for. I have a lot to live for. Yes, indeed you do. Now, Diane, uh, you are 37 years old, yes, correct? I am. Yes, I am. And you're married? Yes, I am. And your husband is 21? <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. Maybe that's a lot to live for, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you have children? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. And you have children? Yes, I do. And that's a lot to live for. Yes, I have I two wonderful think. boys. Now, why do you think you cannot lose the weight? Um, because I need to be motivated more. I need more help, um, not just, you know, support. I need somebody to tell me what I can do and how I can do it. And I'm, I have problems eating sweets. Um, I'm diabetic and I know everybody craves sweets. And I, it's, <laughs> you know, even being diabetic, I'm like, oh, chocolate, oh, ice cream, oh, you know. Well, you know how bad that is for your diabetes, <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. And, yes. and you've got to be really strong-willed. And sometimes I just don't have that willpower. Sometimes I don't have it. Now, things that have happened to uh, her, Marianne, that you've been involved in, uh, she can't ride in your new car. Oh. No, she cannot fit in my sports car. She can't go to the movies with me. We can't go to the club because you know her husband's 21. And he'd <laughs> like to go to the club. Oh, yeah. And dance. I mean, we can know? dance, but it's not fun if your best friend can't get up there and dance with her own husband. That's right. And she's never been to the top of my apartment. I have an upstairs. She's never been up there. But I got a new house coming, so now she's going to be able to walk through it. Yes. <laughs> you have tried everything, is that correct? Diet? Yes, I have. How many different kinds of diets? Oh, gosh. Weight Watchers. Um, medication like... Uh, when you say a lot of pills, all those pills you're taking, what kind of pills and what are they for? Are they for the diabetes? Um, not just the diabetes. It's for my asthma. It's for circulatory problems. It's for arthritis in my for knees. For things that happen because yeah, of the it's weight. it's because of my weight. Do you yeah. feel you eat way too much? I mean, what is the cause of the weight? I, okay, I don't overeat. I used to be an overeater, okay? I did when I was younger. I was an overeater. Um, but now it's to the point I eat normal. I eat like a normal person would eat. Actually, but you're probably still less. gaining weight. Still gain weight. I fluctuate, though. I go up and I go down. I'll lose 50 pounds, then I'll gain 20 pounds, and then I'll lose 60 pounds, and then, you know, it goes up and down. She has a thyroid problem. Yes also plus i'm on steroids because of my asthma and yes. steroids is horrible yes do, marion do you think she really tries to lose weight 
In the beginning, no. Honest. No. Now that she is more positive, she has something in her life besides her two children, besides me, her husband. This is my family. This right. is my sister. I don't have any. Right. Now that she's positive, she wants to break out of that shell. This is what she wants. So lately? Now she has been trying, and she has lost. I'm just tired of being sick and tired. Yeah. I'm so once she's standing up, she's facing it. She's taking it on. And it she's ready now. I could try to motivate her, but she yells at me a lot. <laughs> well, she knows you too well, yes. right? You're not as likely to, yes. mo to yell at somebody who you do not know that. Right. Uh, what does your husband feel about all of this? He is very supportive. Is he? Yes, he is. How He's long like, have you been married? Um, been married uh, about seven months. We got married in December of 2000. What about marital relations? What about your sex life? You know, our sex life is wonderful. I'm not going to lie. Okay. It is wonderful. <laughs> yeah. That 21-year-old. <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing to say on the TV, but um, Well, I but think I'm I'd honest. rather hear that it's wonderful than hear that it's not wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> But it is wonderful, and he is very supportive. But I feel in my heart, I feel in my heart that I, I want to satisfy him as much as I can. Right. Because I love him. I want to give him everything I can give to him. Right. I want to give him everything. And I feel like my weight just holds me down. From doing all kinds of things. Yes. Like dancing at the club and things like that. Right. And I feel like, too, you know, he might see a pretty woman walk by, you know, skinny, you know, beautiful. And, and he, might, he might look at her rather than looking at me. I want him to look at me. I want him to be proud of me. So there's your motivation. Yes. yes. And, and Marianne's my motivation, too. There is the motivation. Well, let's find out what you're all about and see what we can do to help you. Thank you. Next, you're going to meet a woman who says 420 pounds is too much. She wishes she could feel normal. Stay tuned. And now from our reaction room. Sometimes I feel like I'm worthless. I need to lose weight. I want to be a better person. I just, I need to break out of my shell. And I want to be healthy. I'm tired of hurting. I'm tired of the pain. I want to live. Next. Beverly says that when she was four years old, her would tell her she was fat. And ever since I can remember, I've been big. She's always been overweight, just like me. I've always been overweight. And the kids teasing you, Bev? All through my life. And I never let them know how bad it hurt me. today with people who are very overweight and the loved ones who want them to do something about it. Beverly says that when she was four years old, she would tell her she was fat. Well, now at 420 pounds, all she wants to do is feel normal. And this is her mother, Mosanna, who wants desperately to see Beverly lose the weight. Beverly you went for a certain kind of surgery, and, and they needed to get your weight, right? Yes. So what did they do? The regular scales wouldn't weigh me, so they took me downstairs to the cargo scales to get my weight. Now, when you said you were fat at four, were you fat at four? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this has been a lifelong problem. This is not something that just occurred recently. Yes, it has. I've, ever since I can remember, I've been big. I never realized it until he said that. What do you feel is the reason for your daughter's weight, Mosanna? Well, she's always been overweight, just like me. I've always been overweight. Right. I'm overweight now. 
and I'll be overweight. I'm just, that's the way we are. But after she had her second baby, she had a sterilization. And that's what I think caused her troubles because she hasn't been able to lose any weight since then. What was it like for Beverly at school when she was growing up? Well, it was bad because you couldn't get any school clothes unless they were stretch. Because we didn't have the money to go out and buy huskies or whatever they call them. You know, right. they were like twice as much money and I done well to get anything because I had two boys too. It's And the kids teasing you, Beth? All through my life. And I never let them know how bad it hurt me, but I'd come home and cry to my mom. What do you feel that you eat too much? It's probably not what I eat, but what I drink. Drinking Kool-Aid and tea. I, if I cut that out of my diet, it might tea? help. Yeah, because sweet tea. But I'm trying to think of things that, that I could actually help lose the weight. That's the only thing. I so really you don't eat a lot. That's what I'm hearing. You're saying you do not eat a lot. No. Yeah. And I've lived with my mother the last three months while we were moving our home. And she can tell you no, that I didn't eat any more than... She doesn't eat as much as I do. She does not eat as much as no, you do. No, she does not. No, she doesn't. People don't believe these people when they're big and overweight. They think they just sit and eat all the time. Yes. No, they don't. I know she doesn't. I really even thought she did too before she had to come and live with me for three months. And I just thought to myself, well, I'm just going to see if she's overeating. And, not, you know, I thought she wasn't really trying to lose weight. No, she does if not If you're overeat. eating a normal amount, then a diet is not going to do very much for you, is it? I don't know what... I don't think so. Because I can diet and maybe lose a little bit of weight. But, but then if it, you're eating a normal amount, how much can you cut down, right? Right. <laughs> okay. What is she eating? If she's eating a normal amount, what is she eating? Well, she just eats beans and potatoes like us. You know, we were raised on that, so. Beans and potatoes. <laughs> beans and potatoes and macaroni and whatever. Do you eat fruits and vegetables? Yeah. And I'm borderline diabetic. They, they don't say that I'm diabetic. They say I have pre-insulemia. Right. And... And that's something that's pretty serious because you have to really watch that. Right. I think we need some more information. We need to ask a doctor why these people all say that they are not eating too much. We're going to get some professional advice when we return. We're going to update you on a past Sally guest who has lost over 500 pounds. We'll be right back. And now from our reaction room. I want to be normal. I want to be a good mother and wife. I want to do the things that normal people do. Next. They can be eating very little food and it's very high calorically. They may be eating a little bit, but what they're eating is the wrong stuff. Your choice is either to start to lose weight or to become more ill than you already are. Whenever we talk to people who are overweight, we usually have somebody's written a weight loss book. I couldn't read one more of these darn books. I mean, I am up to here, except somebody has gone and done something completely different. This is weight loss expert, Dr. Howard Shapiro. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you what he did, because I'm very enthusiastic about it in a minute. First, I've got questions. 
Every one of the people on our stage today and every one of the people we've done shows like this for the last 20 years, they all say they are not eating any more than the ordinary person is eating. Right. Now, are they all lying to themselves and to me? Well, I, I think there are a couple of things we have to consider. First of all, it's, there's no such thing as what the ordinary person is eating, number one. Number two, they can be eating very little food, and it's very high calorically. The other, I mean, for example, uh, you're all I think saying Beverly, you ate Beverly, normal. Beverly is saying that she eats a small quantity of food, but it may be heavily laden with calories. It may be high in fat, high in sugar. She has a lot of Kool Aid, things of that sort. So there may be a lot of calories. Well, this is where this. Let, let me show you something because I think it's going to just frost you. I, I did me. I'm going to show you a picture. This is a picture of a raspberry tart. That picture is 440, that uh, tart is 440 calories in that tart. On this page, there are eight bowls of raspberry with cream on them, 440 calories. This or this, right? It's exactly the same. And if you had four bowls of the raspberries with a tart, you've had more food and half the calories. And that's the whole point. The worst news of the day Five spare ribs, guys. 1,000 calories. They may be eating a little bit, but what they're eating is the wrong stuff. Yeah, and I think there are a couple of things we have to address. I think, first of all, you know, we, we can empathize with all of your problems. A dentist can't get out of his chair at home, and his whole life he's a prisoner in his own chair. Um, all of you have medical conditions. You know, I tell my patients that you may end up with the potential for a medical problem. You have reached it. You have gotten your way to a point where you have medical conditions. You have no choice. Your choice is either to start to lose weight or to become even more ill than you already are. When you're overweight as a child, there are no boundaries. People make fun of you. They call you names. These things stick with you forever. You have feelings of inferiority, feelings of insecurity. You grow up with them and it doesn't change and it continues through your whole life. Secondly, we don't eat just because we're hungry. If we're overweight, we're eating because either we have stress, anxiety, tension, we smell food, we see food. These are external triggers. And then you try to go on a weight loss program and because you have so much weight to lose, it becomes a long journey, a long task. So what you really answer? have to do is you've got to understand, number one, this is a journey. It's going to take a long time. It's going to take you at least a year to lose a significant amount of weight and maybe two years or even more to lose all the weight that you should lose. The second thing is you don't have to eat less food. We just showed you in this book that you could eat a lot of food if you eat lower calorie foods. What about Dennis's surgery? I mean, I th I think I, if I were uh, an anesthesiologist, I would be terrified to put a man at 800 pounds under because he could have a heart attack and not be with us. You're absolutely right, and that is one of the major fears. On the other side of the coin, that's Dennis's only hope at this point, at 800 pounds. If he does get this surgery, he will have a stomach that is very small. He will only be able to eat minuscule amounts of food, and it probably will help him. But he still has to learn along the way, because you can eat minuscule amounts of food all day long. You've got to learn along the way to eat a little bit more healthy, to make better choices, and you have to really want to get better. Dr. Shapiro's book is a picture-perfect weight loss and it's a program for permanent weight loss. When we come back, we're gonna give you an amazing update. Stay tuned. Next. There's a woman named Arlene Edelman. She appeared on the show in 1990. You really have to take care of yourself. That's what he'd want. You are the fact. You're up on stage. like to catch up with past guests and I told you we were going to talk about this. We have to find out what life has been like for them since they left our show. All right, there's a woman named Arlene Edelman. She appeared on the show in 1990, 11 years ago, and this was called Overweight Families and she was with her son Michael. At that time Michael weighed 1,020 pounds. Arlene, the mother, weighed 8 150 pounds. Take a look. 
I don't know how long it's going to take me to lose weight. I don't know if it'll take me a year, two, three. I really don't care. And I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a, uh, I don't know how to say it, but I'm not a person that'll say that I'll weigh uh, 150 pounds. When I get down to a weight that makes me comfortable, that's when I'll be comfortable. You really have to take care of yourself. That's what he'd want. I it always really used to say, Sally, next week and as soon as you can walk and as soon as you can come and visit me, I'll take care of my operation and I'll go and I'll go. And you make excuses as a mother because Are your you going to have the you. operation? Definitely. Michael passed away in March of 92 due to complications with his weight. I mean, we've been talking about how serious it is. It's life-threatening. Arlene, however, managed to lose over 500 pounds. And is currently writing a book called Appetite for Lifestyle Changes, coming out this fall. We'll be right back. our guest today, a very uh, emotional time. Uh, and we're going to give them all a copy of the book. And we also have aftercare, as you know. And so we are going to look into each of their lives and see what it is that we can do. And we will report back to you. Meanwhile, I think this picture perfect weight loss uh, with the good looking Dr. Shapiro is a very fine book because it says it in pictures for dummies like me who are tired of reading all that stuff. Questions or comments, visit our website, sallyjr.com. See you down the road.